Okay, um, I'm gonna do another set of examples that are more complicated with radical expressions. Um, <clears throat> now, in the last video, you know, everything worked out perfectly. You know, the index matched the exponent or the exponent underneath the radical sign was a multiple of the index. So it was able to divide evenly and beautifully. Here, that's not the case. So what do I do? Some can be taken out of the radical sign and some has to be left inside when you're simplifying these. So we are simplifying radical expressions. Okay. So simplifying radical expressions. So the first one, let's look at this one. <clears throat> My index is a two because there's no number written there, which means it's automatically a two. So <clears throat> um, I can approach it the same way that I did before, right? I could say, well, four divided by two is two and simplify it like that. But the thing is that five cannot be divided by two. So I'm going to show my work on the first one, and I'm not going to do that again for the rest. Uh, you'll see why. I'm going to separate it into an x to the fourth times x. I'm going to you know, separate it so that one of the exponents on these two expressions um, is a multiple of the index. Now, this is what I'm doing when I do this in my head. So you are allowed to separate this like this. If it's multiplication, then you can say, well, the square root of the product x to the fourth times x is equal to the square root of the first times the square root of the second, only if it's multiplication. And then simplify it the same way you did before, where you have this square root of x to the fourth. So four divided by two is two. And then this can't be simplified because the exponent underneath the radical sign on x is less than the index. So it's left inside. Okay, so the square root of x to the fifth, whenever a exponent underneath the radical is greater than or equal to the radical sign, you could simplify it. Well, this is bigger than the rad, uh, sorry, bigger than the index. This is bigger than the index. So I can simplify it, but it's not gonna divide perfectly. So I'm gonna think of the, you know, the largest amount. It's on division, you know, five, divided by two, right, is two with a remainder of one. So it simplifies into an x squared with an x with a, with a one left inside. So you could think, this is what I'm doing in my head when I do this in my head. This is the process that I'm doing if I'm showing my work. You're not gonna want to do this every time Honestly, you're going to want to be able to do it in your head because we're going to combine a bunch of different things. So again, how much does it divide? Five divided by two. Well, it divides two with an extra one as the um, remainder. So two of them come out and one of them's left in. So let's use that process again. Let's use that mentality here. We're going to do it for the next example. Okay, the cubed root of y to the 10. So the index is a three. 10 is not a multiple of three. So some are some y's are going to come out and some are going to be left in. I know some are going to come out because the exponent on y is larger than the index. Well, how much does three go into 10? Um, I'll show it again. I'm not going to do this division again. But three goes into th 10 three times, right, with one remainder. So this is going to simplify to a y to the third with a leftover one inside. Don't forget your index cubed root. So the cubed root of y to the 10th is equal to y to the third times the cubed root of y. Three of them come out because they divide evenly three times with a remainder of one. So one of them left in. Okay, now, I mean, this gets fun. It's not that, it, <laughs> don't be scared, okay? It's, it's fun. Let's do this one. This is a fourth root. The index is a four. 22 is not a multiple of four. 22 is greater than four. So some of these Z's are coming out of the radical and some of them are staying in. Well, let's think about 22 divided by four. Four goes into 22 five times. 
with two remaining. So five Zs are coming out and two are left. Don't forget your index four. Uh, obviously I'll do another one. Um, X to the 34, let's do the cubed root of that. X, let's do X to the 35. All right, so let's do the cubed root of X to the 35. Okay, um, well, 35 divided by three is 11, right? With a remainder of two. So 11 of these X's come out and two are left in. Don't forget to write your index. So this is, this is what we're doing, simplifying radical expressions. Now this I'm doing with variables. It happens with numbers as well. Now, if you do not know your perfect squares, perfect triples, and there should be perfect fours here as well, at least the first few, then this is going to be more difficult. So let's look at these two situations. They're very different. We did this one before. This, the cubed root of eight is equal to two. Why? Because two to the third is eight. It's a perfect triple. You could represent it as two to the third. They can cancel each other out. But eight is not a perfect square. This is a square root. I approach this very differently than I approach this. This one is two. What is this one? Eight is not a perfect square, but I want to think of a factor of eight that is a perfect square. So give me you know, a factor of eight that is a perfect square. Well, four times two is eight. So if I want to simplify the square root of eight, then I can rewrite it as the square root of four times the square root of two. That's technically the same thing, as long as this is multiplication, right? And why did I choose four and two? Because four is a perfect square and the square root of four is two. So this simplifies into two times the square root of two. So the square root of eight is very different than the cubed root of eight. Let's do the square root of 24. 24 is not a perfect square, but there is a factor of 24 that is a perfect square. 24 can be represented as the square root of four times the square root of six. Why do I choose those particular factors? because one of them is a perfect square. The square root of four is two, and I cannot do anything else with the square root of six. How do I know to stop here? There is no factor of six that is a perfect square. Six is two times three or six times one. None of those numbers are perfect squares, so therefore I can't do anything else with that. The square root of 45, square root of nine times the square root of five. Why did I choose those factors? because nine is a perfect square and the square root of nine is three. And I can't simplify that. This is multiplication still. And the square root of 45 simplifies into three times the square root of five. Now, can I combine stuff? Let's see, 300 times X to the third, Y to the 10th Z to the 15th, we'll do the square root. Now I have to do all of this. To each his own, right? Uh, what I'm saying, or the reason that I'm saying that is sometimes students like to do it piece by piece. So the square root of 300 first, okay? The square root of 300, it's the square root. So I'm looking for a factor of 300 that is a perfect square, 100 and three. Square root of 100 is 10 because 10 squared is 100 and I can't simplify the square root of three. So this is the first part. Let's look at the square root of X to the third. Well, three is greater than two so I can simplify this. Some of these X's will come out and some of them will stay in. Well, how many will come out? You could do it the same way we did before. I'm not always going to write this. Three divided by two goes in ones with a remainder of one. So this is going to have one of these X's come out and one of them staying in. 
I'm doing each of these separately so that I don't have to worry about them all in one shot. The square root of 15 or Z to the 15. I'm gonna do this one in my head. Two goes into 15, seven times. Seven times two is 14 with a remainder of one. Now I'm not done. The reason that I say that is because this started as one full radical expression. I separated it to deal with them each, you know, on their own so that I don't get overwhelmed, but I need to pull it back in together to simplify the, the original uh, expression. Who stays out? 10 stays out, X stayed out, Z to the seventh stayed out. Who stays in? A three stayed in, an X stayed in, and a Z stayed in. And here's my answer. Now, you know, if you practice it enough, you get to the point where you could potentially go straight from here to here. But if you can't do that, don't worry about it. Do it on the side, do them each separately as if they're their own problem. Focus on that and then pull it back into the original. Not a big deal. You, you can do that. You are allowed to make your life easier. Okay. The cubed root of 24, x to the 10th, y to the 15th. And z to the, and these could be any variables, you know, um, and z to the 20. And again, all variables, just like before, all variables are positive that I'm dealing with, okay? Every single variable that I'm dealing with is a positive number, okay? No negative numbers, because that'll take us into a whole other, you know, situation. So remember that. <laughs> um, oops. So this is overwhelming. It's a cubed root this time, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So, all right, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna pull it to the side and do each separately. I'll do the number first, the cubed root of 24. Let's do that. Now, 24 is not a perfect cube, a perfect triple. So you have to think of a factor of 24 that is a perfect triple. Well, eight is a perfect triple. And eight is a factor of 24. So this can be represented as the cubed root of eight times the cubed root of three eight times three is 24. And the reason that I choose these two factors is because it's a cubed root and eight is a perfect triple. And the cubed root of eight is two, right? We did that one. And I can't simplify the cubed root of three because three is not a perfect cube. So my numbers are done piece by piece. That's why I said it makes it a lot easier to know these really well. At least the, at least the perfect squares and perfect triples. You should know perfect fours also, but at least at a minimum. Let's look at <clears throat> the cubed root of x to the 10th. All right, well, 10 is greater than three, which means that some of these x's will come out it's not a multiple of three, so some of them will stay in, when I say in, under the radical sign. So how many are gonna come out? Well, 10 divided by three. Three goes into 10 three times with one remaining, right? Three times three is nine. I wanna make it to 10, so I have one left over, and this is a cubed root. Um, let's do y, do it in green. So I want the cubed root of y to the 15. Well, 15 is greater than three, so some of these y's are coming out, but 15 is a multiple of three, so that means none of them are staying in. 15 divided by three is just five. So this simplifies into just y to the fifth. This happens. Sometimes some of them come out, sometimes some of them stay in, sometimes all of them come out, it just depends. Anything is possible. There's so many numbers that I could deal with. Z to the 20th, the cubed root of that. Well, 20 is greater than three. So some of these Z's are coming out. Some of them are staying in because 20 is not a multiple of three. So the closest multiple of three that is, you know, less than 20 is 18. So three goes into 20 six times because six times three is 18. 
And then I have two left over to make it to 20 and a cube root to multiplication. So back to the original problem. I did each of these separately. Back to the original problem. Who's coming out? So from the number, two came out. From the x's, x to the third came out. From the y's, all the y's came out, y to the fifth. And then from the z's, z to the sixth. And then underneath the cubed root, what's left? I have a three left. Did I have x left? Yep. No y's, because all of them came out and two z's that were left. And this is my final simplified version of this. And do not get overwhelmed, piece by piece, one at a time. And again, if you do not know the perfect squares, perfect triples, and you should do the perfect fours, it's going to be more difficult. Practice them, learn them, study them, remember them, flashcard them, do what you have to do just to get, you know, to get what you need to get. <laughs>